Good morning. Welcome, those of you here. Welcome to those of you joining us online for worship. Um, so we're going to welcome some new members today. That's exciting. And um, I don't think everybody is here or will be here. So we might have another new member Sunday. That's OK, right? Who doesn't want to just welcome new people? Um, in your bulletin, you can see announcements about um, Super Bowl of Caring next week and the church camp out, stewardship of attention, um, open sanctuary coming up on February 26th in preparation for Lent, calling all singers. Okay, so we're going to start learning our new liturgy, those of you who want to, but we're going to start that actually next Sunday, so February 13th. Before you go home for your Super Bowl parties, you can start learning the new liturgy. A um, couple of the prayer announcements. Um, so David Sheriff, who most of you know is helping run our sound and streaming, uh, his wife Julie has been dealing with an infection. And so the treatments um, that they were able to schedule were all on Sunday morning. So that's kind of going to continue for them for a few weeks. So keep them in your prayers. Also, big announcement that happened this last week um, that our teenagers know about is that the National Church made the difficult decision to cancel the ELCA youth gathering this summer. So we are pivoting once more. <laughs> um, and I was sad, um, but I am just so grateful that we have such a great group of high school kids. I think whatever we do um, from Trinity will be awesome. So I look forward to, if you want to talk to me about what's been percolating in your head um, on your way out of worship, that would be helpful. And we'll still meet on February 27th at my house and you know, start making a new plan. We're pretty good at adapting nowadays. <laughs> um, other announcements from the congregation? Okay. It's just weird, right? Like, I have never preached on this text uh, in Idaho this Sunday because in year C, the year of Luke, uh, one year Mia was our intern and she preached, and the other years, Ash Wednesday was like February 10th. So um, we have a long, long season after Epiphany, so we're just going to enjoy it. It's nice. <laughs> um, so let's stand, and we're adding um, crucifers and acolytes today. So thank you, Jason and Aldwin, for being our first back. Um, stand and face the font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Our gathering song is on page two of your bulletin, Now That the Daylight Fills the Sky.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First lesson is from the sixth chapter of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, 
Your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate until the Lord sends everyone far away and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading Psalm 138 responsibly. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet he cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me, O Lord. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second lesson is from the 15th chapter of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I, in turn, had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be, to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you, have come to believe the word of the Lord. The 
Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 5. Glory to you, O Lord. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at, the, at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Nets breaking and boats sinking. The mention of these two images is enough for me to recall today's gospel story, the calling of the first disciples. The crowds of spectators and the men scrambling to haul in the fish awaken the senses. Jesus is well into his ministry in Galilee. Though not welcomed in his own home, Jesus has healed people suffering from demons and diseases and delivered his first sermon in the synagogue. It's noteworthy that Jesus recruits his first disciples in the midst of their workplace, the Sea of Galilee. The call to follow Jesus might occur in a place of worship, but clearly that is not a requirement. The men are washing their nets after a night of unsuccessful fishing. There's nothing outstanding about the setting until Jesus appears. He has been healing and teaching, and at the center of his ministry is the word. And the calling of the disciples continues this theme. He teaches the crowd from the boat and then tells Peter to put out his nets into the deep water. Peter trusts Jesus' words, albeit a little begrudgingly, and lets down the nets against all reason. Reason probably told Peter, an experienced fisherman, that Jesus' instructions were foolish. The best place and time to catch fish is near the shore in the morning or evening. Yet Jesus commands Peter to cast the nets into the deep waters at midday, and Peter obeys. Peter knew enough about Jesus' ministry to be open to possibilities, and Jesus provides an abundance of fish after a night of empty nets. Abundance and new life accompany the word of Jesus and his work in Galilee. Scrambling in the boat, the first disciples get a glimpse of Jesus' power, he is obviously more than a savvy fisherman. Peter is made aware of more than Jesus' power. Peter recognizes his own sinfulness. He falls at Jesus' knees and says, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. The prophet Isaiah had a similar response. He said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. There's a famous saying, I really tried hard this week to find the source, but was unsuccessful. God does not call the equipped, God equips the called. Reflecting on the call stories of this week, someone compared them to a conversation between Frodo and Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. Frodo says, I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish none of this had happened. And Gandalf replies, so do all who live to see such times, but it's not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. So, thank goodness that God equips the called rather than calling those already equipped. We are living in a time of so much loss, grief, uncertainty, and doubt. We might think 
this is not for me. I'm not the right person for this. This is not what I learned in Sunday school or from my early teachers or even from my parents. This is not what I thought it would look like to follow Jesus. This is not what it has been, and yet this is where we are. In the same way that God never accepts the protests from the called ones like Isaiah, Peter, the Apostle Paul, or so many others who have gone before us, God gives us what we need to do what is needed in the world. God has given you what you need to do what is needed. God may not have burned your mouth with a hot coal, but God has made you enough, enough for this moment, in this place, in this time. What will we do with the time that has been given to us? This is the guidance for discipleship that Jesus gives throughout his ministry. Don't be afraid. Leave everything and follow me. The disciples make it look quite easy. They had heard about Jesus and saw him perform a miracle. Of course they followed him. When I was a first year counselor at a Lutheran camp in Montana, the first phrase became essential to my sanity. Do not be afraid. Who can imagine how easy it is to forget those words and the promise that we know accompanies them? I will be with you always. First year camp counselors need a good deal of grace. Certainly they need grace while learning the mechanics, like cooking over an open stove, learning hiking routes. But more than any other time in the rhythm of camp life, I needed to be reminded of Christ's accompaniment during Bible studies. I was 18 with just two weeks of staff training no seminary training yet. What questions will engage these campers? What passages will help them make connections with their own lives? How long should I let them be silent before moving on? And how can I help them open up? About the middle of every week, I was often ready to throw up my hands, frustrated with my inadequacies as a counselor. But also in the middle of every week, we worshiped using Compline, prayer at the close of the day, right out of the old green hymnal, but also in our ELWs. As we read and sang the service, I was comforted every week by the five scripture verses in the service, God's word. Bend your necks to my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble hearted. Set your troubled hearts at rest and banish your fears. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Cast all your cares on him, for you are his charge. You are in our midst, O Lord, and you have named us yours. Do not forsake us, O Lord our God. We were all reminded that we were not alone. Christ Jesus was with each of us, equipping us for this little corner of ministry that was ours. I was not walking beside Jesus in Galilee, but the Holy Spirit was certainly in our midst. I was not alone in my ministry as a camp counselor. The burden was off, but my role was still important. I was needed as part of the community. I was called, but did not need to be afraid. God was equipping me along the way. Jesus never gave up on his disciples when they fell short, and we can take hope from that. They doubted, ignored, betrayed him, but they also learned from him and spread the good news, cured diseases, and identified him as the Messiah, the healer of the world. Our life of discipleship is also full of starts and pauses, tripping and getting back up. In the end, we must remember that it is not all about us. We are not called to be God's children because of qualifications or character or potential, because we are already equipped God's call is unpredictable and unmerited, and once we are called, the Holy Spirit works through us. Still, I often want to experience Jesus' word in a setting like that shore in Galilee, in which he and his word are so clearly present. Thank goodness, then, for tangible gifts that we share, the holy sacraments. Like today's gospel lesson, Jesus' word is central to both. The gifts of baptism do not come through water alone. The gifts come through the water and the word. The word holds the same role in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Jesus gives us tangible gifts in the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper if we trust his words. Peter trusted Jesus and threw his nets into the sea. 
Jesus promises we will hear the word in the sacraments. God intercedes through the word with the water, the bread, the wine, forgives our sins, and gives healing and wholeness. God gives abundant life, as abundant as that first catch of fish. Through the word, the bread, and the wine, the Holy Spirit equips us still today. Amen. Our hymn of the day is 817 in your hymnal. You have come down to the lake shore. Please stand as you are able. And, um, remain standing for just a bit and we'll invite our new members to come forward. Uh, yeah. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, 
whom we welcome as new members into the life and ministry of this congregation. Beth and Donna and Pat have come to our congregation from various places. Um, so with the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Sisters and brothers in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of baptism among God's people in this place? If so, answer, I do and I ask God to help and guide me. I do and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? If so, answer, we do and we ask God to help and guide us. We do and we ask God to help and guide us. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together, we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. We give thanks to you for our new members whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread, and the prayers, and in service to others. It's been a joy to get to know the three of you, and a few of our members have um, been participating in a new member class, and Donna and Pat have been coming to Monday morning study group, but we really hope everybody gets to know these three um, in our new adapted whatever <laughs> ways that we're doing ministry now. So welcome. Let us pray. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Equip your church to proclaim the good news that we have first received, the forgiveness and grace shown to us through Jesus Christ. Send us out as apostles sharing the hope of your salvation with a waiting world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy are you, O God of hosts. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Reveal your splendor in fiery sunsets and in deep blue twilights. Teach us to recognize you in the beauty of our natural world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Soften the hearts of rulers and governments that they perceive and tend to the needs of their people. Remove corruption and the impulse towards violence. Protect first responders and military personnel who risk their lives in service of others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain. God of grace, hear our prayer. The disciples received help from partners as they brought in an abundant catch of fish. So strengthen this congregation's partnerships with community organizations and ministries. Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks to our for our ancestors in faith who boldly answered your call. By their example, give us courage to live in faith and to proclaim your mercy 
until the day that you gather us into your glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You share a sign of peace with one another. Remain standing and we continue with our offering. Thank you for continuing to support our ministry. We have basket or plates in the back of our sanctuary and you can also give online. Blessed are you, O oh God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lend us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All are welcome, for Jesus invites us. Please be seated.
body of Christ given to you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand as you are able. Uh, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Prayer. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. God who fills the creation with abundance, Christ who spreads his arms in forgiveness, Holy Spirit who draws ever near to us, bless you and bring you to life everlasting. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is, Will You Come and Follow Me, 798 in your hymnal.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.